Thank you, Chair. Uh, I promise I've got a timer, so I'm going to try something for the first time and keep to the time with my cell phone. <laughs> uh, basically, we're going to introduce my fellow authors in this talk. They are from the University of Northwest South Africa, uh, ESRL NOAA, and the Finnish Meteorological Institute. We're basically also moving away from the rest of the world, and we're going to focus on an area in the southern African continent. In preparing some of these slides, I came across this latest publication from the WMO, which celebrates the 25 years of gore measurements. And it, I thought it was pretty apt to just pick up on one paragraph there. And it was also highlighted in other talks from uh, people like Ann Thompson and John Burroughs. And it essentially highlighted the. Uh, the fact that without long-term observations, we do not have any chance of fully understanding this complex climate systems and the processes and signals that we need to elucidate from that. So I thought it was quite apt to, to include that into this JW-related talk. Briefly, my talk will um, center around explaining the circulation that is observed at the Cape Point station. Uh, using the radon as an air mass classification tool, since we see a very distinct signal between the marine and, and uh, continental air masses. And then I'll just briefly look at six years of aerosol optical properties and how they are related to that air mass circulation over the, the site. Um, I would like to then just include a case study which further highlights that factor. So. Just the measurement system is pretty much the same as the NOAA collaborative uh, network. We've got an air inlet at about th 230 meters above sea level, so it's very much removed from any local sources. This just shows the Cape Point meso scale circulation patterns, and we see that the summer months are really uh, the ones that are very important to us. We see wind directions almost exclusively from the east and the southeast. And this is contrasted in the winter months where the southeasterly component are switched with more of a north and a northwest component. And with the other two months or the other two seasons, basically showing that transition between the main um, two advection. Just closely, if we look at the type of air masses that are associated with these wind directions, we see that most of the air masses originate from the deep south Atlantic. Um, as they make their way towards the African continent and they get close to the land mass, they are slightly curved and approaches the station mostly on that east and the southeasterly direction. The opposite is basically true for the, the north and the northwesterly component winds. They usually uh, originate from within the interior of the African continent or the southern African continent, some anticyclonic flow. And the ones that approach more from the west-southwest, we can see once again originates from the deep South Atlantic and really do not include any of the local influences. These type of circulation patterns which approaches from the north could, can uh, include Cape Town Air, and sometimes it cannot. I'll show you a nice example of that. So we've been using radon, which we found is quite a, a, a nice indicator to distinguish between air mass, which has been in contact with uh, continental air or not, since its distribution over the land and the, um, the ocean is so vast. Uh, I've plotted there just uh, radon versus absorption coefficient, and you see that both of them actually follow each other pretty nicely. So I think this could justify <laughs> using radon in that sense. So for this studies, we have classified radon less than 350 uh, millibecquerels as being of a marine origin, and air masses above 1,200 as uh, continental air masses. So. Basically, here we have the absorption coefficient in the coarse fraction. Over six years, we see that most of the data density is sitting in this bottom area between zero and about 2.5 uh, immersed megameters. But we do have this very large episodes of uh, absorptions. Better way to look at it is through these uh, 
percentile distribution. The, this is a composite for six years with the annual distribution over there. And what we see here is very much an enhancement in the absorption coefficients for the months May through to August. That is classically the southern hemisphere winter months. And in contrast to that, we have the summer seasons where the easterly approach winds result in the individual monthly means being much lower than the annual means. So if we look at the type of air masses that are responsible for this, I've alluded to it earlier already, we see that the ones that have the origin over the continent of Africa or southern Africa normally results in these elevated uh, distributions and vice versa. We see that the summer months for say for example December air masses originate from this area down here. So very much this bipolar distribution in, in the um, data set. If we look at the scattering coefficient, this is again the total data, the density you can see is anything between point, uh, 2 and about 30 inverse megameters. And what is evident here from the composite is that there is an absence of any sort of annual uh, seasonal cycle in, in this data set. This is the cause fraction. It's not too surprising since we uh, have a marine site that we are dealing here, dealing with, and there is a lot of sea salt derivatives that can also dominate this um, data set. However, when we look at the sub-1 microset, we basically exclude the effects of sea salt, and we see once again that this uh, annual pattern emerges with enhancement in the scattering factors or during the months through May through to August. We also wanted to look at the particle size which are represented here via the Armstrong scattering exponent just to see how that relates to what we have observed in the previous two graphs. And what we see here is that the Armstrong exponent shows an enhancement in those same months that we see the, the air masses originating from the, the center of um, the African region. Um, the typical values for the scattering Armstrongs around about 0 0.5, quite a wide spread in the distribution of the data. And this is contrasted by the summer months where we see a much more uh, narrow uh, distribution of the data. Uh, I've mentioned here that wind speed is, is, is a factor. When we split the data set into the continental and the marine according to the radon distribution, we find quite an interesting result that a lot of the data from the marine sector is centered around an Armstrong value of about zero, which is pretty low, and not much of a spread in the data. However, contrast with the continental sector, we see that the data or the Armstrong exponent is a factor of four to five times higher than what we find for marine. We also wanted to look here at the extinction in terms of the single scattering albedo. And what we find is that most of the extinction at Cape Point can be around totally scattering of nature, but we have these uh, incidences of sometimes up to 30% absorption in the extinction. And once again, the total the interannual pattern is, is visible as with um, scattering data as well. Uh, we see here that uh, the composite of the six years again reflects what we've seen from the previous couple of graphs that the months where the, exp the Armstrong exponent is, is the highest, in other words the smallest particles are also giving rise to the much lower uh, single scattering albedo. In other words, characterizing those ca particles, it looks like it's definitely highly absorb absorptive small particles um, coming from sources like the, the interior of South Africa and perhaps also some of the Cape Town here. This is contrasted with this albedos for January, February and the summer months, December, where the extinction is very close to zero. I've again split this data set into the continental fraction and the, the marine fraction uh, according to the radon classification and we see that everything is above 0.98 for most of the time in the marine sector whereas 
The scattering albedo for the continental sector shows much more variation, um, a lot of small particles present that results in this uh, extinction coming down to, or the, the, the median extinction can al almost be as low as 0.85. So I've just come now to uh, a case study where we can show how these data that we, or the features that we've observed in the long-term data set, how it's actually come about. So what we have here is, oops, basically a picture of the view from the laboratory when the polar front is, is um, approached and the opposite contrast is when we have this uh, continental stagnant air that flows over the station. And normally this precedes that in a matter of a day or two, a couple of hours even. So what we have here is a case study just randomly picked June 2010. This is a frontal passage that was preceded by continental outflow. So if we just look at the air mass trajectories, we see that initial conditions was uh, very much uh, the circulation was from the interior of southern Africa. It moved over the north component and then it turned west into southwest where the, f uh, the front actually passed over the station. So if we look at the Armstrong exponent, which shows us uh, it's indicative of particle size, values around about 2.5, very small particles. This was measured on a, a wind speed, or uh, excuse me, a wind direction, mostly from the east, northeast. And then we see this rapid change to much larger particle sizes. And this, that's, that is actually associated with the frontal condition or the polar front that's passed through. And then we have this little perturbation here, which is associated with that condition over there, which I'll show in the next slide. So if we also look at the the condensation particle counts, the number of particles, and it relates pretty well to, to radon. So what we see in the prefrontal conditions is a, a, a very large increase in particles, small particles, um, large radon concentrations. And then with the passage of the front, it's almost like a different sampling site that we have, very low values. And then I want to highlight this feature. This is where the particles went up to almost 8,000, 9,000 when that air mass passed through Cape Town. So like I mentioned earlier, sometimes the Cape Town air can be included. And we see that also even on low radon or relatively low, low radon values. The particle counts were quite high. And associated with that was an increase in the absorption coefficient. Um, prefrontal conditions, again, we see very high values and <coughs> orders of magnitude difference when the polar front came through. I think I'm doing all right on time, yeah? Uh, this is the last one, basically. Uh, I'll skip on that. We just see here uh, that the association of the single scattering albedo, roundabout values of 0.8, was associated with this very um, small particles in this uh, Armstrong exponent, the abrupt change with the front. And also, what's interesting is the inverse the relationship between your scattering albedo and your Armstrong particle size. Nicely um, evident there. So just finally, we uh, looked at you know, measuring aerosols in uh, the, the main importance in the global patterns are, are usually associated with the radiator forcing efficiency. So I, I made some basic calculations just for the top of the atmosphere using the Deline and Ogren um, scheme. And we found that for the marine, we can get a forcing of minus 27 watts per square meters. Um, continental is slightly warmer, minus 24. And if we look at the distribution of the entire data set, most of the data or the forcing lies between, say, minus 29 and minus 23. But what is interesting is the, the range that we find within this data. Those are so-called outliers. They could be anything from very cooling to extremely warming of nature. And those are typically associated with events like this, where there's some burning, and we see the plume very close to Cape Point. And I think a lot more effort needs to be invested in investigating what effect these types of uh, forcings have on, f for example, local weather conditions, and not so much the global climate, because we do see this happening um, from time to time.
Then quickly the conclusions. Uh, the climatology is strongly influenced and driven by the mesoscale circulation patterns. Cape Point is almost like a double sampling site. We have very much a signature of the continent and it contrasts sharply with a signature from the ocean. Um, there are still some uncertainties in the aerosol radiator forcing. It's quite high still. And we have to look at the way that this mask, the strong spatial temporal heterogeneity in the um, samples. This is usually as a result of the short lifetimes of aerosols and the complex emission sources. And then just to tie up with my initial comment that um, we do need this reliable long-term records. This Cape Point record is now eight years in duration. Um, we are anticipating to continue with that for as long as possible so that we can start looking at um, uh, much longer uh, long-term trends. And just finally, since a lot of animals have been shown on these pictures, I thought I'll just show you the local uh, Cape Point baboons. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much, sir.